So welcome everybody, welcome to Energy Play Shop number 40. And uh, today is March the 23rd, 2023. Um, <laughs> it's an interesting day for me anyway. So I, I feel the energy and I feel the 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 shifting of my own um consciousness. So let, let's put it that way. And so um the two instead of just having one topic for for each um episode today i actually have two or at least two smaller um topics that i want to introduce just to give more of a perspective um that i i lately come to realize and it it helped me um shift some of my own understanding of what life on earth is so <laughs> um, before we begin, I actually want to do a little presence meditation for everybody so that we can all come to, to just be present because um, we're all dealing with a lot <laughs> these days. So and I think it would be nice to just do a small, a, a short meditation. So... <clears throat> Just take a deep breath in, everybody, if you will. And let it all go slowly. Breathe out. And then breathe in again, slowly and deeply. And let go, slowly. As you breathe out, also remember to let go of anything that does not support you in this moment. For example, stress. Let go of all the stress in your body. And breathe in again. Breathe in deeply. And breathe out when you cannot breathe in anymore. And as you breathe out, just have the intention that you want to let go of all the stress, all the chattering in your mind. Yes, whatever it is that does not serve you in this moment, simply allow it to leave. And continue to breathe in and out, following your own rhythm, with the intention of elongating your breath as much as it is still comfortable for you. And each time when you breathe in, set the intention that you want to bring back more of your attention to yourself. We send out our attention, we send out our energy to other things, people, places during the day. So in this moment, call back all of your attention, call back all of your energy and just gracefully receive all of your own attention and energy back into your body. Just pay attention to what's going on inside your body. Be with all that you're feeling in your body. And after a while, you most likely will feel actually more solid because wherever it is that you place your focus, your attention, then your energy will come back to that place. And 
and when you call back all of your attention, then your energy will come back to you as well. And when you have your full attention, and then you can come all the way back into the room and just take a deep breath in. And welcome back. So I mentioned that there are two small, or oh, I should say, I'm not too sure how small they are, but I'm I'm pretending that they are smaller because they can, potentially they can be big topics, but I don't want to actually go into too much details because um, I think we all have like the first thing I want to talk about is incarnation. Is, um, and I'm quite sure those of, of you who who kind of tune into this kind of um, podcast or um, energy um, play shop or workshop most likely have asked yourself, what am I doing here? Why am I here? So that question has probably crossed your mind at some point and you may or may not have some idea what those um, reasons may be and you probably have read some book or some article or hear somebody talk about it uh, how we um, come into into this life and I just want to um, kind of talk some a little bit about it because uh, I remember when I first hear about these and um, talking about how why we incarnate there has been a lot of different um ticks on it and i particularly remember what franco talked about it <clears throat> is that we when we come into this this life we have our cosmic soul we, and then we partner that up with a an earth soul and then we partner that up with a body and then we like like so those all those things and and he kind of explained that you know the the cosmic soul would come in with a set of um, experiences that it wants to have while while the, the the soul is here and then the human part of our soul also has their own agenda of what they want to experience and the body, um, that's how we select our body and, and all that. And um, there are also books about, I forgot the, the, the author, but it's it's something called um, The Journey of Souls. I, I remember reading that book a while ago that talks about um, how people remember before they come in, they um, like through, through um, hypnosis regression they kind of start to to find out what was um what were they trying to experience what was the experience that they come here for they remember some of them remembered um having kind of a, like a council meeting with before they actually incarnate on earth and and talking with their um the entourage about what it is that they want to experience um, in this lifetime. And that's how they pick their, their parents and, and all of those um, situation. And then they would come here, which was, um, that's, that's my understanding is that, you know, before we come here, we have a big meeting on the other side of the veil. And then we decide, okay, this is what we're going to do. <clears throat> and then we come here. And I think the, the extra bit of information that I want, that for me was, um, 
I guess I, I should have guessed it, uh, or I guess it should have been apparent, but I it didn't occur to me until uh, I actually heard it, um, and Elia was talking about it, and she mentioned that, well, actually, we didn't, we didn't just plan one lifetime. It's not just, okay, every time before we come here, we will plan it. it that's, it's, it's not a one-off thing, that actually we planned um, our soul's journey we actually don't just plan one lifetime. We plan like thousands, hundreds of thousands. I don't know how many. So like the so there's a plan. Our so has a plan. And um and that plan is not just for while we are here on earth. It's also when we when we are not on earth, when we actually um uh, shed our body and go back to the other side of the veil that we plan those as well so we the the soul actually or i should say the 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 highest self actually have all of those planned and um and when i heard that it was like okay that makes way more sense um because if we just do it one life at a time, it, it could be very <clears throat> haphazard because you never know what's going to happen in, in, in one life, lifetime. Mm, we could plan something and it just backfired so badly that it may deter us to ever come back again. So, but no, and actually. We might not learn the lesson in one lifetime. The lesson might take a number of lifetimes to learn. It might, yes, especially if we have been um, on Earth or some other planet that's much denser. So it's it's the the environment, like the playground, may not allow us to um, learn too much in just one lifetime. So that's and it actually makes so much more sense that we plan at least hundreds of lifetimes at a time so it's a chunk of lifetimes and we we even plan the afterlife so that we know we may, we know that we came in let's say we're here for some really gruesome experience then we have to actually plan afterlife how to um clean up our psyche after we had like a really horrendous experience so so what kind of resources we need in order to um, be able to to rehabilitate our soul so that we can we we have the 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 um, um, what is it the wits in order to be able to continue because the soul the soul is eternal and each time we incarnate is the same soul we may incarnate in different body, but our soul is the same. Our experiences is the same. So um, we it, that's why the planning was is so elaborate. Mm. And um, and so and when I heard that, I also unders I kind of understood how come there's some people that are so that seems to be so slow or dense, you know. You <laughs> not 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 anybody home. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's like you, you tell them over and over again. It, it's like some of the other people, like they don't even um like they there are they have so many of the same experience, but they never learn. It, I, I'm quite sure every one of us know people like that who just, you know, they keep repeating the same pattern and they don't seem to learn. And the the as quickly as we, we would like them to learn. <laughs> so when I when I finally um really it it, it sank in that we are so actually we planned hundreds, if not thousands, of lifetime at once so that we like we we guide our own experience that's when i finally um it sank in and i, I was able to <clears throat> let go of the bias when i look at other people it's like 
Okay, I have told them like so many times, but they are still thinking like that. And and I get impatient. <laughs> I should not. Oh, I should I I have to say that, you know, yes, yes, my job is really to plant seeds. And it is up to the other people to um whenever it is they they are ready to to um learn the lesson, then they will. It's it's not up to me. However, I'm only human. <laughs> I do get impatient. But now that I, I understood that we, there, each, each soul has a plan. And I may not understand how other people's plan are. Um, like some of my, just looking at my own kids, it's like, I know they, they are smart enough. They are, um, they like, as as so goes, I know that they are more awake than this. How come they are making the choices that they are making? And, and I scratch my head <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and um, now that I know there is a plan and it's not up to me to judge how other people's plan is going or not going how how their plan is suiting me or not suiting me I was finally able to say okay okay I'm good now <laughs> I don't need to change the world I'm good <laughs> I just know that there is a plan and um <clears throat> and I'm good with mine so that's that's one of the things that I want to share with all of you. Um, I know there are so many other things that um, I can talk about in terms of, oh, well, actually, incarnation. Uh, I have one more thing that I want. I think I've shared it before, but I actually want to share it again, is that um, the soul always is. The soul always is. And when we incarnate, it's actually the body that comes into the soul, that gets connected to the soul. So it's not the other way in, around. And that it's, it's actually the, our, our body is within our soul. And uh, I believe I have talked about that before. However, um, the... What I want to stress is that actually how safe, uh, from my standpoint anyway, how safe our body actually is. Because our body can only experience our soul. Because the, the body is within the soul. So if you really understand what that entails, you would know that Actually, nothing can happen to you unless your soul allows it to. And um, I know there are there are horrendous things that people experience. Their, their body get mangled or they go through horrific experiences. But it's all within the soul. Somehow their soul wanted to have that experience. And that's why the the body um, uh, is able to be the vessel for the the spirit to have that experience. So I think those are the two main things that I want to. to I, I was just I was just wondering. Um, um, I I I was hoping. <laughs> I was hoping. <laughs> That like if I was going to have a horrendous head-on collision, that my soul <laughs> would be sucked out of my body before my heart, car hit that embankment or cliff or whatever, that my soul would get just sucked out a little bit before you know the squish. That, that's what I was really hoping. <laughs> any any thoughts on that? <laughs> um, no, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> it's um. <clears throat> there's a connection between the the soul and the body and um and so that is an, an agreement between the soul and the body um 
So when the body comes into the soul, then it is really to experience physical reality. Because your 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 soul cannot have a head-on collision or anything like that. It can't. It is subtle body. It cannot have that. Your body can have, okay, because your body is a is a physical um, matter, and physical matter can interact with the physical world or the re uh, physical reality. So the um, the what happens when when something like horrendous happen? The, the it's the connection between the body and the soul starts to um, um, go through changes, and that's how the that's how the the the, the death process is. It's really the disconnection between the body and the soul. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And it could be slow or fast. <laughs> Why do we have such a dark topic tonight? It's not a dark topic. I'm at really all. curious. Yeah, that's kind of. It's not a dark topic what at we all. Mean. No, it's it's not a dark topic at all. It's it's I don't know which part that you heard, but it's actually we are we're talking about um our soul's journey. It's our soul actually planned everything. It does not just plan one lifetime. It planned. Uh, hundreds and thousands of lifetimes like there there is a plan so that that's not dark i don't know i come from the culture where that is very dark so <laughs> but that's okay <laughs> okay okay Any other comments or questions? No? Okay. <clears throat> um, I want to actually talk one more thing about incarnation as well. The the reason why I have the the um, the the, the fractal in, in the background, like all, all those things that you see, is really I searched for fractal patterns and this this is the one that showed up and it's blue. So since I like blue, so I, I just I picked this one. But um so we have um we plan many, many lifetimes. However, that does not mean that um if we plan it, then that's it, it's cast in stone. Nothing is ever cast in stone. You always have the choice to make changes. Um, it's never fixed. And so I actually want to talk about how to shift things. How to, um, um, if you if you want, let's say you plan that you learn a certain lesson in ten lifetimes. However. If you are ambitious and you really want to learn that lesson in way less time, um, there is a way to do that. And, and <clears throat> there's one way I know of anyways. And that is, um, is to be comfortable with change. The more you are comfortable with change, the faster you'll be able to learn a, a lesson, because um, this is this is a, a video game. This this each lifetime is is a completely different um, video video game. You can think of it that way. So if you like, I, I remember the first time I I see my I, I kind of watch my kids play video game. It's like there's no instruction. What the heck are you going to do with with the game, like, like, but when I watch him, uh, my my kids play, it's like they just try things. They don't care. They just go and try things. They don't care whether their character die, 
or um, they, they encounter something that they don't know how to respond. Because for them, it's like it's a it's a game so they they just go full out to play and they try different things and um that that actually applies to this game of life as well if you want to move faster learn something faster is to really free your mind to take up thoughts that you've never entertained before, to do things that you may not feel comfortable doing, to have conversations that somewhere in your mind you may you may think of as being um, difficult. Like the more you are comfortable doing, going out of your way to um, like with intention to go through and find ways, different ways of doing something, the the faster you're gonna learn whatever it is that you are going to, you want to learn. And so um of course not everybody likes change. Not everybody likes to go out and um on a limp and do things that they're not used to doing. And I totally understand it because I'm not that kind of person as well. However I think what's what was really changing for me is is um like the last couple of days is my mind was changing so much I was thinking huh, why not <laughs> if not now <laughs> when I think this this is one of the ways that we can actually um bring on the new paradigm is our ability to be uncomfortable and and do things that we've never done before try things that we may have censored ourselves and saying what would the neighbors say don't care what about the neighbors say don't give um <clears throat> any um weight to what other people say you just have to check within will this be something that is going to um, assist you in getting through that the learning curve faster. If it is, then even if it's uncomfortable, to just go for it. So that's my um, that's that's a cheat. That's a hack, I should say, to so that you can shorten your learning curve. So just be comfortable with being uncomfortable and because that's the that's what the energy is supporting us to do <clears throat> i'm done with this unless there are any uh, other questions or comments one of the things you had asked was why why did we incarnate like what it's pre-planned for us before we come. <clears throat> yep. And if it's planned so far ahead and so many lifetimes ahead, we're really not going to not going to understand why we've come. We might understand maybe a little bit of it, but like, of course, we have lessons. We have lessons every decade or every 20 years or whatever it is. But at the same time, I, I know of people right now that are starting to see their past lifetimes. They're starting to have glimpses of them and they're friggin' scary. <laughs> <laughs> and they've, they've screamed out and asked for protection because that's how scary they are. You know? <laughs> so maybe we don't want to know sometimes what our lessons might have been I don't know it's interesting times it's definitely interesting times um <laughs> we are here for one thing and one thing only is to experience what do you want to experience don't know what kind of experience are you having we're here to experience whatever it is that we that is that we are experiencing 
you know, it's it's like I I try to find out what's what's my purpose. What's my purpose? Like that that question has plagued me for a long time, and and that's just that's just the ego, because the ego wants a story. But we are just here to have experience. You can choose to have more pleasant experience, especially now when um, like the energies are changing. It used to be that we are here to to suffer more than um, like to experience suffering rather than you know, to to experience um, the 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 better side of life. Mm -hmm. But that that paradigm is it's going down the drain as fast as we allow it to. Now we're just here to experience and we're just here to um, learn lessons. But we, but suffering is optional now. We can actually learn things without suffering. So if you're still suffering, then um, <clears throat> you have to understand, you have to find out, you know, what, what is it that you... Um, that keeps you in that you know um duality mode you you may be asking the wrong questions uh, i know it's it may not be the answer that you're looking for but it's it's actually the the best answer that anyone can can give you just um as a soul we can't there are things that we cannot experience as a soul a soul is subtle energy we take on this body so that we can have a f experience of certain things and we attract those things to us to experience Did I answer your question enough? Yeah, 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 thanks. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Okay. <clears throat> so moving on, next topic is about um, spirit guides. Since we have so many lifetimes planned, that's why we have um, spirit guides. That's why we have guides to, because we we're not here. Like even though we don't see the the spirit guides, however, they are here for us to guide us to um, be able to really experience what it is that we are experiencing, that we've come here to experience, to create that reality for ourselves. And that's what the, the role of spirit guides are. And um, we don't, like, we each come, we each have at least one, but you sh most most of the time we have more than one. I, I remember the last time I checked, I have seven. And, you know, it depends on the the, the person. Some people have um, three, like, in, so, so it's any number of guides. Um, and um, and your guides on, um, don't usually some of them anyways, don't stay with you all your lifetime. They come and go. It depends on what you need in that um, period of your life. Um, for example, when my kids were younger, um, I would have a different guide. And, and when, so, so different periods of your life, you would have guides that is going to assist you in that during that period and the new guides would come when you're moving into another period 
and and because now that we are moving to paradigm that's why i want to bring up this topic of of um spirit guides because i used to think that all spirit guides are good and they are you know high and mighty and i do everything like uh, i do as i'm told <laughs> that's that's what i've been been uh, living under but lately i actually um i've actually heard that mm, well you know um, there are actually guides that help us to um, have bad experiences because in the old in, in the old paradigm, we come here for drama. We have we are here to experience that light dark paradigm. However, we're moving paradigm now, so it's actually a good time to revisit the guides that we have and make sure that they are high vibration and and really are here to support us um, to move into the paradigm that we are all trying to move into. So that's why I want to bring up um, guides. Um, maybe not everybody knows who their guides are. And so that's what I want to talk a little bit about um, today. I would you know, actually give some example of, uh, I remember when I first started um, learning, uh, getting more interested in in spirituality, um, the first guide that I actually connected with, that I know that I have a, a, a guide, it was a, a monk. I think Oma was the name that that um, this guy gave me. So Oma is this, and uh, Oma is a Tibetan monk, I believe, because because of the 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 way that the colors that he he used of his of his uh, robe. So I think he's a Tibetan monk. So and um, energy of Oma is really, I still remember his energy, even though he's no longer with me, because. I my life changed, so I changed the guides as well. And remember, there was this one one of my guides that came in, um, and and I no longer feel Oma with me, and I was so devastated because I I I have this attachment issue to to Oma, <laughs> and when I saw this new um, guide coming in, beautiful guide. Um, Beautiful, beautiful. It has a is in a um this new guide that I have was I remember the vision I have when this new guide came in. He wears um an armor and it's not like made of steel or anything like that. It's the gold armor. And it's studded with jewels, like beautiful, and have um have an, a sickle shaped knife. And I was or a sword, and not not really knife. And I was like, whoa, beautiful. And I saw that vision. And um, but I struggled with this new guy because because I was still attached to Oma. I was like. I, I want Oma. I, I mean, I don't mind this new guy, but I want my Oma too. So, <clears throat> so I had some issue with this new, <laughs> my attachment issue with um, my old guide. And of course, now I have completely different guides now. And, um, and actually one of my guide now is a, is a collective. It's not it's not um, a single person. It's actually a collective. So, so your guide can be a single um, consciousness, or it can be a collective. So, so your guides have to. It's really um, it's a range. Um, so, I. Yeah. Hi there, hi there. Hello, Tatiana. Hello. Okay, I'm, so I'm, just, I'm just talking about guides 
Um, so the different kinds of guides that you can have. You can have guides that maybe um, uh, your grandmother, for example, somebody that you that may be in your family lineage, uh, or it could be um, somebody that is, it could be an angel um, or archangel, or it could be, uh, for example, um, or it could be a collective. So, so, so many different um, variety of guides. How we get our guides is because you have your you have your life plan. So before you come in, you kind of have a um, a, a a meeting with the guides that is most capable of assisting you in having those experience that you want to have want, um, in your incarnation. So those those guides would come in with you and they may like you may have you know, arranged uh, for like 10 or 12 or even 20 I don't know how many guides and um, some of them may be um, useful for you later in life and some of you may be useful at like when you first come here so it really depends on what it is that you need and whenever you need the guidance um, for so you attract the the guides or you have an agreement with a guide to come in it's because they are their um energy is most conducive to assist you in having the experiences that that you have picked out that your soul has picked up for you to have in this lifetime so that's um it's one of the thing that's how we get our guides and our guides change depending on the circumstances. And you can actually decide, oh, okay, I want to, or for example, I want to start um, um, to <clears throat> create, um, for example, uh, when I, if I want to start create, let's say power objects, then, then, because I don't know how to create one, so I may want to attract or have an um, agreement with a guide who knows how to create power objects. So what are power objects? For example, um, a talisman is a power object, um, and there are actually sigil can be a power object, meaning that it, that that object represents a complex set of energies and it attracts that complex set of energies for for you to experience in in this lifetime so um so so if i want to let's say open an etsy stop a shop to to sell power objects then i may want to attract a a guide who can assist me in doing that it it yes go ahead if you had if you had a number of guides which guide would you call upon if you wanted to ask for support for something or advice for something or help with something in my experience there is usually one guide that is um closest to you like okay like in my experience i'm talking about my own experience mm -hmm. there's, okay i there's usually one guide that i would um call on that i feel most comfortable with and whatever it is i would i would talk to that guide first and then that guide is kind of um the one that's going to um if if that guide is not the best person to help me in in um making my the the experience that I want to have, then that guide is going to um coordinate with the other guides okay, okay, so that one is is kind of the the goal between right so they'll they'll figure it out out among themselves, yeah <clears throat> okay. 
Yeah, that's thanks. my experience. Uh, um, so, and for example, when I started opening portals, there are guides that actually are specifically for opening portals. So then whenever I open portal, I need to open portal, I would call those guides in. And I won't be going through my, you know, my, the, the, the guide that I usually talk to. Because I know that specifically those guides are for portals. So unless you know that that uh, the, the, the specific guide for a specific thing, I usually would go to the guides that the guide that work with me the most. Um, however, you can actually sit down like you can sit down and uh, connect with all of your guides and really find out the what each one is for so that you can know um, more specifically which guide to call on. So that's something that you can do. I haven't done it yet. I know the, the seven guides and uh, so I, I know I have seven active anyways because I I've been told that I have more than seven but only but they're not all active at the same time so at the moment I have seven and I haven't really talked to all of them yet I, I'm starting to talk to more of them now to find out so yeah. <clears throat> if you're oh, interested the same sorry sorry I want to draw uh, are guides and spirits the same? What is spirit and what is guides? Okay, spirit is just a name for um, somebody, an entity that is a, a subtle entity. A guide is a specific um, spirit that is here to assist you. Okay. Because we we have we have guides. We have both um, spirit guides and we have actual guides, uh, human guides. For example, Sifu James is a human guide, or Franco is a human guide. Even you. <laughs> uh, yep. Even me could be a human guide. But, and then uh, there are spirit guides which you you don't see them well at, le at least I don't see them um or most people don't see them you may have a, a a vision of what they look like but you don't really see them hanging around so they however they would communicate with you um telepathically or sometimes they would communicate with you just by um, more subtle ways. So, like when we feel is, instinctively something, is that like a guide telling us? When you feel what? With when we do something with by instinct, like you know, like you don't even think about it; it just comes to you suddenly. It's possible. That, yeah, it's possible. That could be a guide prompting you. Yeah. Yeah, it's possible sometimes. Sometimes you know you just have the the feel, feeling that oh okay I need to like before you go out of the house okay I need to bring my umbrella or call somebody so no. that that could be a guy that's reminding you. Um, I still don't understand the spirits. Uh, is that like our past ancestors or? What is it? It's just random. Like uh, more people can have the same spirit guiding them or more guides. Like you said, the guides are not always around. So they come and go. Like So they could be guiding other people too. Possible, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but when you say spirit, then that is your own personal guide. Like. <clears throat> <laughs> I don't I quite understand your question. I'm trying to understand what is a spirit guide. Like, uh, is it 
a spirit, like when we say uh, the spirit of the person who has passed is still around you. No, that's a ghost. <laughs> okay, that's a ghost. Okay. That's a ghost, yeah. Okay. Um, a spirit guide is, um, it's a, it's really a spirit, um, not a ghost, but a, a spirit that has, um, that you have made an agreement with to assist you in having certain experiences. Okay. So it works with the soul, so. It works works with the soul. As I mentioned, um, because you have, because your soul, that your highest um, soul, actually created a plan for you that's hundreds and thousands of lifetimes. So the spirit guides are really there to assist you, so that when you are here, even though you don't remember what you are here, why you come here. So the spirit uh, guides are actually the, um, there to assist you in remembering things, or maybe tell you that oh, you should you know you should you should do this, and they would do that um, by just creating the the energy so that you can start to like give giving you some breadcrumbs so that you can start to follow that energy in order for you to um, get the experience that you signed up for. Mm -hmm. But uh, sometimes our experiences are also from past lives, yeah? They affect us in this life. So would they help us in that way? Knowing what we have been through before? You would only have experiences that is from past life if that is what you plan to have. No, but they affect you. Like, like if you were stabbed in some previous century, you could still have pain lingering in that area. Yeah, you will only have that if that's what you plan to have. <laughs> Remember, we, we have a, pl a plan. We have a plan. We don't remember the plan, but it's been planned out. Wow. So we have so many different experiences. How come you only experience the, the stabbing of this one particular lifetime? Because it's relevant for you to um, do something about that. Ah, so there is some connection. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. It's not just because it's in the plan. It became part of the plan because it was very traumatic or something that it affected your lives throughout. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'm getting there. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you're welcome. Um, what else do I want to talk about in terms of um, guys? Okay, yes. Um, not all guides are high vibration. So um, I suggest actually that, that you all um, every now and then to communicate with your guides and feel the energy. Because sometimes the, the guides um, may be out of sync with you. you. You may have had that guide with you to support you to have um, a light duck or a, a, a good bat um, experience. However, it, that may not be resonating with you anymore. So you need to review your guides regularly, regularly as in at least um, every like once or twice a year. Just make sure that you know the guides you have are still resonating with you and meaning that they still support the experience that you want to have. So how do you know whether a guide is um, still resonating with you or not? 
is you you call in the guides and you feel them. You really feel them. Whatever you feel them from them, you have to um, really okay ask yourself. Do I want to? So this is the feeling of my guy. Does do I want to have that energy with me? Like some guides, if they are um lower in in vibration, you may feel certain negative feelings from them. So you know that the that guy, that that particular guide is here to support you to have that feeling. And you, if you don't want to have that feeling anymore, then <clears throat> you need to um, allow, you know, let go of that guy. Just ask the guy to leave and never return again. And um, of course, before you do that, you have to make sure that you've been um, just doing some clearing yourself and make sure that you are grounded yourself. And be in the space of the experience that you want to have in your life. So when you are grounded, when you're centered, then you invite your guys to come in and you feel. You feel each of them or feel them as a group. Do they feel as a group? Do they have the feeling that um, you're comfortable with? So if they give you a feeling of, you know, joy, light, love, then you know, okay, I'm good with that. I, or if you maybe feeling some emotions that you don't really resonate with, then, then you have to um, start to address your, your guides is to just let go of the, the members within your guides to leave and never return. Because the existence of the guide is really to point you in the direction for you to have the experience. If you don't like their energy, they're not going to um, assist you in having an experience that you're going to want to have. So for me, that was... Um, that actually have been showing up for me. There are some experiences that, like I felt pulled towards my, and my guys tell me, oh, okay, go do this. And when I really check in, it's like, uh, nah, <laughs> no, thank you. So I, I think as I grow as a person, I, I also have to take charge of my, um, have to be responsible for my own experience as well and not as before where I thought that whatever my guys tell me that well they're higher vibration but not all of them are and um, you are really the the authority on what it is that you would like to experience so if in doubt call your guys in have a chat with them. Make sure you understand each other and and that they are, all of them are still the right guides for you or not. Questions, comments? Okay. <clears throat> Can I ask a question? Sure. What if I don't feel any guides so far? Only life guides? Like, you know, who is physically can give me advice, but not spiritual guides. It's a matter of expanding your own awareness. So... Um, if that's the case, then what I usually, um, that's a meditation that, uh, I, that I can 
um, take you all into to do in order to meet one of your guide, <laughs> not all of them. And I really want to you to um, do the homework yourself if you want to is to number one find out how many guides you have number two meet each and every one of your guides and really feel them you may not hear them you may not hear directions or guidance from them yet however you can definitely feel them Okay. Could it be the reason why I do not uh, meet my spiritual guides? Because I was afraid of all that spiritual. I was afraid to see them. And I wasn't sure who is good for me, who is bad. Well, if you are afraid, then that's probably why they have not. Um, yeah, you know. I was afraid. I don't think like I still afraid. I think I'm now. Now I'm okay. <laughs> well, yeah. If you are afraid, they are definitely not going to. Um, try to get your attention because that's that will only freak you out so however um if you if so first thing is you have to process your own fear is to process your own fear um i think that's that's the 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 best way to go about it is really do a lot of fear processing Process your own fear. And when you um, get to the point where you are, you're open to the idea that you'll be able to meet at least one of your guides, then, then do the, the meditation to meet your guide. And also I have to trust my mm. feeling. How do I feel this guide, right? If I feel good about him, then it's good for me. Um. <clears throat> how make, how I can so make, I suggest be sure thing. that it's my guide, but not some you know, nasty spirit who want to play with me. Um, you don't know. Yeah. And, and also, um, you have to process your fear because there's so much fear there. Yes. There's so much fear there. So you really have to do a, a, a good fear processing to let go of that first. Because um, we all have spirit guides. We're not, like when we come here, we're not just, you know, drop. Here. We're not just, you know, okay, bye. <sighs> you dropped on, on planet Earth this this planet that is <laughs> a lot of things happening. It's it's really um, how to say it. It's a shit. Sh it's a shit show. <laughs> let's let's just put it. Let's just yeah, I think I shut them is. down. All my spirit guides. Yep. Because I was afraid of them. You have to understand one thing. <clears throat> you have a body. You trump the spirit because they are subtle 
they cannot interact with the physical world. You can interact with the physical world. And all they can do is scare you. And when you are able to process the fear, then when you have no fear, what can they do to you? Nothing. They subtle bodies, the difference between a spirit and a body, a physical body, is the physical body can interact with the physical world. And the subtle bodies cannot. The, the subtle, uh, the spirit can influence you, scare you, or, or um, you know, whisper in your ears and give you suggestion to do certain things. But that's all they can do, suggest. You're the, you, like, if they scare you, if they say boo and you say boo back, no fear. They can do nothing to you. So, yeah, fear processing is the first. I would highly suggest you do that. Because you're, you're just playing. It's, it's the scary, I'm scary game. And if you are scared, of course, they will come and play with you because you're just so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> they say boo and you jump. That is fun. But if they say boo and you just look at them and, and just laugh, what can they do? Nothing. <laughs> so process the fear. There's nothing can, they can do to you. It's only about like um, how they guide you. You have to feel if you um, if you feel that it's good for you, then you follow. So when you so first before you connect with them make sure you are grounded so you feel good within make sure you feel good within and when you're grounded then you invite them to come in and when they come in you feel their energy if the energy um feels good then you know that they resonate their their high uh, vibration when they come in and you start feeling fear or anger or sadness, then you know that the energy is because you already have, um, you already centered yourself. Whatever comes in is they are bringing in their energy. And if you feel that energy, you know they're not high vibration because high vibration um, beings don't have those. Okay. They, shouldn't have, they shouldn't have fear, they shouldn't have anger, they shouldn't have those. If they have those, if you don't feel absolutely um, blissful when your guides come, you know they're not high vibration. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? In that case, let's do a meditation to invite all of our guides to come and let's just feel them. And also, if there are any guides, like any um, one in your entourage that does not feel good is to, you know, kick them out. Let's do that together. Since we, we have a few people here, so we can probably get a stronger energy. So I, I don't feel that's right for me, so I'll just leave. Okay. <laughs>